Okay, the theorem we're proving is that regular languages are closed under the concatenation operator. What this means is that if we can take two machines, so let's say that machine one accepts language A1 and machine two accepts language A2, we need to create some machine N that accepts these two languages concatenated with each other. So this means back to back. So here's the proof idea. What we're going to do is we're going to take these two machines and we're going to concatenate them. That means that we do the first one and then we do the second one. So we should only get acceptance if it goes through the entire machine. So we're going to take all of the accept states in machine one and we're going to transfer those over to the old start state in machine two with the empty string. So what this is going to mean is that we're going to have something that goes through M1, M1 is going to finish, it's going to transition into M2, and then M2 is going to finish and it's going to either accept it or it'll be rejected somewhere along the line. So that's really the only thing that we need to change other than dealing with some start states and accept states. So in order to define this new machine, let's just call it N, we'll assume it's the whole thing. So we're starting here. We'll label this as Q1, and then we're finishing in our set of accept states, F2. So for Q, our set of states, it's going to be the union of Q1 and Q2 in our initial two machines. Uh, for the alphabet, it's going to be pretty straightforward. It is going to be the alphabet in machine one, and taking the union of that with the alphabet in machine two. So do the transition function last? So we're going to say Q1 is the start state. So instead of having Q1 and Q2 both be start states, because Q2 would be the start state of machine two, it's just going to be Q1. And finally, um, our set of accept states is going to be F2. So everything that, so our F is going to be F2. Everything that was an accept state in M2 is going to be an accept state in our original machine. Now for the transition function. This is where things get a little bit more complicated, but we can figure this out. So uh, let's say we're doing the transition function and we're going to apply it to a state and an input. What are we going to get? There's going to be some different outputs. So depending on the condition, so we're going to have to think about what we changed and what we didn't. So here's the first thing. If I'm in machine two, so let's say that we're taking a state that comes from machine two, so Q is from Q2, then I just want to use the regular transition function that exists in that machine. So if we're in the second machine, I'm going to use the second machine's transition function. Similarly, if we're in the first machine, we're going to have to be careful about this. I want to use the first machine's transition function. So that way we're just using the same old transitions we already had. But we have to remember that we changed the final state originally to no longer being a final state. So these are just for the regular ones. These are for the, the states that are not in the original final states. So Q is in our set of initial states, but not in the final state. Well, it used to be a final state. Now, let's say that we have a final state. So the state that we're looking at is the final state. Um, but we're specifically looking at the cases where input is not empty. So there can be some cases where you have a final state and then it loops around or takes you to a different state that's not a final state before coming back. So for everything that doesn't just transition on to M2, what are we going to do with it? Well, we just want to do the same thing we did before. So same thing. Uh, we're going to use the original assignment function with delta 1, Q and A. We're going to see what we get. Now, if we're in the old transition or the old final state and our string is the empty string, then what we're going to do is we're either going to send it to Q2 or perhaps uh, there's something that is done in the original machine with the transition function. So this is really what we're getting at here with 
this case. So when we have, when we're in this state and we're taking this empty transition function, where do we go? Well, we go to Q2 or we do whatever um, the original Feynman function says that you should be doing. So that's how we formally create the machine. In the next video, we'll talk about the last operator, the star operator.